Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm going to talk about Nest.js architecture. Okay. Before going into the topic, uh, this is my portal, uh, maybe the new one. And this is how you can join my channel. Uh, I mean, you can join the Discord server. And if you have any question, you can directly post the question to me. Okay, uh, regarding the, the topic and my current playlist, these are the two playlists which we are focusing on. This is the Nest GS Advanced course 2023 to 2024. And then another playlist where I am adding the more and more videos is all about Nest GS and uh, interaction, Nest GS microservices and the serverless architecture. So we are using some AWS components and interaction of those with the Nest GS microservice. So these two play playlists will go on, I think, a couple of months and more focused on these two playlists only. Okay. So in this video, we are talking about Nest.js architecture, which you can consider as a part of advanced Nest.js course playlist part. So uh, you might have seen uh, how the Nest.js application structured. And in my videos and in, in the demos, you might have seen that Nest.js application is nothing but uh, uh, combination of all the building blocks where we have a modules module contains a controller services factories providers services uh, pipes so, i mean there are many building blocks and you are already aware if you are already using nest yes we are creating interceptors filters pipes controllers services providers and then combining everything putting them inside a module so that uh, those things can be exported and can be reused in another module and in some application, we have one root module. The root module contains the child modules and the child modules contains the controllers, which define the routes, services, repositories, providers and controller. These are the core building blocks and the core children of the module. After that, what we do is we define the route, right? So we define the route through the controllers and we created create injectables through the providers and services, services which contains the core business logic and the repositories which primarily deals with the database. So they have the access point to the data because repositories comes from the, the database abstractions. Okay, services contains the business logic and the providers provides us injectable. So the, these injectables we inject in uh, our controllers and controllers can access the data points. Okay, this is how a simple nest.js application looks like right now uh, let me give you the broad picture how everything else is connected right so when you look into any nest.js simple app what it contains if we start uh, from here it contains a main.ts and app module inside app module you have a bootstrap app bootstrap that that, that that just a syntax we write and in the main.ts we are creating a nest factory so before bootstrap, we create a nest factory and then bootstrap the application. That application overall contains, should contain one root module. That root module can have further child modules. So let's say we have app module. App module can have a database module, shared module, user module, auth module. All these sub modules can be a part of it. Now comes to the controller part. I mean, uh, in module every module what we do is we create a controllers controllers can deal with exception filters pipes controllers mainly deal with the request and response where we define the request method and controllers uh, i mean any api controllers they also need to have an access to the middleware so before accessing the controller route we want to execute this particular middleware okay before request it we access the middleware so middlewares can be registered at, at a module level, or you can register them at the application level. Okay. So we mostly register them at the module level and then use those middlewares at the router level. Okay. That's the controller controllers. We expose, we create only to expose the API interface, either it's a graphical API interface or rest API interface. We can also associate exception filters with the controllers so that why when a controller returns an exception, we can handle that exception. We can customize the exception response, access response code because your code might throw some built in exception. Okay. Uh, user conflict apps exception uh, 409 because user email already exists. 
so these kind of exceptions you can send a detailed message a stack trace for the the development for the uh, for the user right and here comes the the di dependency injection what we do is in the controller controller we inject the service and we call the method of a service service already has an access to the providers right so this is a service when we do the dependency injection of service service x has an access to the injectable repositories so repositories are nothing but a type rm repository or any other orm you are using the repositories has access to the data and service what service needs service uh, in service we are writing a business logic that need an access to the data so that we inject uh, injectable providers inside a service and we access that another other, other than that we associate metadatas and decorators you can write your custom decorator and metadatas uh, which the metadata you whatever the metadata you associate that will re go through the request flow other than that we create a pipes guards interceptors interceptor you can register at the module level or application level sorry at the controller level or at application level uh, at the app instance that app dot use this interceptor auth these are the guards so we create auth guard role guard these kind of guards to pre-check some conditions before request hits the router and then so these are actually the core building blocks of uh, nest.js architecture where we have a nest.js application we have root module root module contains the controllers providers uh, services repositories and uh, these additional building blocks where you can create a guard you can create an interceptor exception filters uh, validation pipes validation pipes actually used to validate your request which is coming to the nest.js okay so this is all about and uh, we are covering all those things we keep talking about the nest.js uh, in-depth architecture in our coming videos also this is just maybe another diagram to explain a couple of more aspects what do we have inside modules module uses middlewares i mean we register the middleware like auth middleware or a token middleware in the module level while writing the module class module imports the controllers so control co controller communicates with the providers and provider has an access to the repositories which connects or access the database right this is how all these uh, dots are connecting to each other right so services interact with the repositories because services we define the logic inside the services and services need an access to the data so they communicate with the repositories repositories are representing the database or orm entities where you do the repository dot find repository dot find all find and update and all these things will directly trigger a query to the database okay this controllers request receives a request from the client like it's a router so we send http get put post delete controller communicate with the provider provider injects the dependency into services so how services are able to access the data because they have they providers provide a dependency injection into services a module provides the providers and module registers all the services so in app module we have imports exports providers uh, controllers uh, all these building blocks so this is how all these building blocks combined creates the nest.js application and we bootstrap that through the main.ts using nest factory but this is uh, pretty much uh, how it all works when you have multiple modules then you need to also understand what you are exporting from a module which can be imported into another module because because you need to define the dependency let's say here i have another module so you need to define the dependency of this module inside this module so that whatever the services you have registered here can be used by this user module right because services are reusable you don't need to write a user service again uh, maybe this is the auth service or maybe a shared service let's say so i created a shared service so you don't need to create a shared service again in the user module i just import the this module into user module in the imports and then i can just provide the dependency injection of this service inside the user module service because user module will have its own services maybe this is a user service so in this user service if this shared service is already exported 
so that also we need to specify in the module declaration that what all things this particular module is exporting so in that case if it is exporting a shared service i can just do the constructor injection of the shared service inside the user service so the user service now have an access to the shared service and i can do some shared operation this is how the modules are designed and if you are angular developer and are do, doing angular development then it's like a very basic things for you i mean you already understand the architecture of angular modules the same concept is inherited in the nest js so i know like lots of angular developers really love the nest js because it's like uh, the the small baby for them okay that's it guys this is all about nest js architecture with this uh, these flow diagrams which helps you to understand the overall pictures